Hello and welcome to the Psychologist Angie TV with me, Dr. Blessing Ntamu. How have you been? As for me, I've been doing really well and I'm always excited to be with you to share knowledge with you. Today, I'm going to be talking about a subject about which I'm really passionate. So passionate am I about this subject that it formed the subject of both my undergraduate and my postgraduate, my master's thesis. Guess what it is? Yes, stress. We are going to be talking about stress, understanding stress and coping with stress. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. Just click on the subscribe button and voila, you're part of this train. Okay, so we're going to be talking about stress on the four subheadings. The first one is definition of stress. What exactly is stress? The next one we're going to be talking about the response of our bodies to stress. And then we will talk about uh, the consequences of stress on our bodies. And then we'll talk about coping with stress. So here we go. Like I said before, please subscribe to this channel. We want to have you as part of us. Don't just visit and go away. So what exactly is stress? Now, like every psychological construct, there's no generally acceptable definition of stress. Uh, there are two major schools of thought about what stress is. Now, the first school of thought defines stress as an environmental event, as a stimulus event. While the second school of thought defines stress as a response of our body to these stimulus events. Okay, so you can say, uh, I don't like stress, referring to an environmental event. Oh, this thing stressed me, referring to the response of your body to an environmental event. Now, I'll take a definition of stress, I think, will help us understand and get along with this discussion. Now, stress is the alteration of the physiological and psychological homostasis of the body as a result of demanding stimulus event, which could be internal or external. I'll take that again. Stress is the alteration of the physiological or psychological homostasis of our body due to demanding stimulus event, which could be internal or external. That is to say, when we encounter an event, that is demanding an environmental event it could be the loss of a loved one it could be prolonged traffic jam traffic situation it could be being in an overcrowded room where you have to struggle for oxygen when we encounter any event that is demanding that puts a strain on our physiological responses then our body has to respond in a certain way and when that response is prolonged okay then we say we are stressed now we are going to try to understand the response of our body to stress using the general adaptation syndrome by Selye. Now I'm sure you've heard about the fight or flight reaction. That's the reaction of our body to any stressful event. And Selye likened, you know, any stressful event to a fire alarm. Like when this building I am in is on fire and when the fire alarm goes off, let's take, let's, for instance, this is an office and the fire alarm goes off. Now, if everybody was working and suddenly the fire alarm goes off, everybody has to stop working and you will notice a lot of activity, urgent activity here and there. Some people trying to direct people to the monster point, other people trying to deal with the fire, everybody, nobody will sit at ease, sit still and watch the fire burn. So that's what happens to our body anytime we encounter a stressful environmental event. Anytime we encounter a stressful environmental event is as though a fire alarm goes off on, in our body and the body undergoes the general adaptation syndrome. Now the first stage of this syndrome, of the general adaptation syndrome, is the alarm reaction. At this point when once you encounter a stimulus event that is stressful, your body responds by the sympathetic nervous system, the adrenal gland, which is part of the sympathetic nervous system, releasing cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and adrenaline. Adrenaline increases energy. These hormones are released to prepare your body to either fight off the stress or to flight, to take flight, to run away from the stressful event, as will be the case in case of a, a fire alarm, a fire situation. So what happens immediately, your pupils will dilate more so that you can see better to increase vision. Digestion will stop to conserve energy. 
your heart rate will increase so that blood, blood is pumped faster. Blood pressure also increases with this. And then you begin to perspire so as to regulate your body temperature, you know. And all of these changes because of the release of these hormones prepare you to address that stressful event. Now, that's the alarm stage. Now, after the alarm stage, you must have adapted to this stressful event to somewhat. Then you get into the resistance phase. Your body now settles down to resist this stressful event. Okay, now there's also this reaction is sustained. All of this dilation of the pupils, increased heart rate, heart blood, uh, blood pressure increase, digestion halting, all of this is sustained. But the rate of that response is not the same way as it was in the alarm stage. So it is relaxed a bit, but it's a sustained stressful uh, reaction, stressful state, resistant state. Now, if the stress is withdrawn, I mean the environmental stimulus that caused the stress in the first place is withdrawn, then your body begins to slowly get off this resistance state, state and begin to repair itself. Okay, and then it gets back to the state of homeostasis. So the stressful condition alters the state of balance of your body. It alters the state of homeostasis. Okay, and then when the stress is off, uh, uh, during the resistance phase, your body restores itself, repairs itself, and gets back to the state of homeostasis. Now, what's happened? What happens in our bodies when this stressful condition is sustained for a long period of time? When this stressful condition is sustained for a long period of time, your body remains in the resistance phase until its, uh, its uh, reserve of energy is used up. Okay, whilst you are in the alarm stage and the resistance stage, your body is using up its reserve, its reserve of energy. So when the stressful condition is sustained for a really long period of time, the body exhausts its reserve of energy and then it gets into the exhaustion phase. In this exhaustion phase, your body is tired. It is not coping anymore. It's exhausted. Your immune system breaks down and this is the stage where you can begin to suffer psychosomatic illnesses. This is where distress comes in. So like you must have heard, there are two types of stress, eustress and distress. Eustress refers to moderate levels of stress that prepares you to deal with life situation, prepares you to fight back or to flight. Okay, that's eustress. Now when eustress is sustained, when that state of stress is sustained for a long period of time, then you get through the resistance phase to the exhaustion phase that could lead to psychosomatic illnesses and eventually death. I hope you follow through with me. Sometimes I get into these details because I have a couple of students who watch my videos and I have to help them with this to understand these concepts. Okay, now this is how our body responds to stress. So when stress is just for a short period of time and it's not extreme, you can cope with it and then your body can be restored after a period of time. But when stress is extreme and sustained for a long period of time, you get into this exhaustion phase means you'll be dealing with a couple of psychosomatic illnesses and eventually it could lead to death. Now, what are these psychosomatic illnesses as a consequence of stress that the stress could take on our body? Okay, one of the consequences of stress is you can suffer from cardiovascular diseases. Okay, you can suffer from a heart attack or any of those heart-related diseases. Stress can also lead to uh, stomach ulcers. Yes, stress can lead us to have stomach ulcers. It can lead us to have colitis. Stress can make us have heart palpitations. So after, just with very little activity, your heart palpitates faster than it should. Stress can lead to regular headaches or migraines. Stress can lead to asthma. Okay? Stress can lead to cancer because, I mean, it breaks down your immune system opens you to attack of flu, of cold, and all of these uh, psychosomatic illnesses. That's why most of the sicknesses we suffer actually as a result of the psychological conditions, the physiological changes in our body. Mostly stress leads to all of these diseases that I have mentioned. Okay, now we get to coping with stress. But before I get to coping with stress, it is important to mention that, you know, the way we respond to stress also is um, individual. There's sub a subjective aspect to how we respond to stress. The way I respond is not the same way you will respond. How we respond to stress will depend on the number of factors. One is our genetic makeup. One Another one is environmental condition, like the kind of food we eat. Uh, another one will be lifestyle condition. You know, the kind of life you live. Do you exercise? Uh, take a lot of water? 
you know and then another one will be your uh, skills what skills do you have uh, in responding with the stressful event and how you perceive yourself your self-esteem and all of the all of these factors will contribute to how your body responds to stress let's not miss that so the response to stress is somewhat subjective that is why i favor the definition of stress being the response of the body to a stimulus event over the definition of it being the stimulus event so it's not so as much uh due to the event as to how you perceive the event i hope i'm making myself clear if you have any questions do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section and i'll respond to them as i see them and please if you haven't subscribed to this station yet click on the subscribe button and please subscribe to this channel you have a lot to gain and nothing to lose at all so now let's talk about coping with stress how can you cope with stress you know, like I said, the stress everywhere. We cannot miss, you know, stress. As long as you're alive, you encounter stress at one point or the other. But our job is to ensure that we help our body during the resistance state to be to be restored back to homeostasis, to the state of balance. And we ensure that stress is not sustained. Stress is not prolonged. Now, one of the things you can do to cope with stress is the age-old exercise. Exercising is a very good coping mechanism for stress. Like we said before, exercise leads to the release of endorphins in our body and this helps us, our body deals with stress and restores homeostasis. Now also other activities like yoga and meditation and mindfulness can also help you deal with stress. Now another thing that can help us cope with stress is listen, listening to music relaxing music well it depends on your choice as i said some of these things are subjective but listening to music is one way to deal with stress to cope with stress now there are other ways of coping with stress another one is delegating responsibilities don't try to do everything by yourself otherwise you stress yourself out and should you fall down and die believe me the work continues believe me the home front will go on your children your husband your wife they will all go on so ensure that you delegate responsibilities when you should that's one way to cope with stress or to deal with stress now another way you can deal with stress is when you see that you are getting stressed please cut down on uh, watching breaking news where they give you the details of all the terrible things happening around the whole world and elevate your levels of anxiety. Cut down on listening to breaking news. Any channel you know that usually increases your levels of anxiety, you know you're dealing with enough stress already, cut off that channel. And is it a person that's always stressing you out? I mean, some people stress you out intentionally, others unintentionally, but you can stay away from people who stress you out whilst you know that you're undergoing a phase of stress so that you can restore your body, your body can relax and get back to homeostasis. Sometimes dealing with stress will simply entail changing your environment. If you know that your stress stems from the environment, it is okay to change the environment and then you'll probably return later if it's uh, necessary. And there are also some other environments that are peaceful and enhance relaxation, like being with nature. For me, for instance, anytime I want to rest and unwind, I love to interact with nature. Go by the seaside, take a walk in the forest, do some hiking, whatever it is, but I love to interact with nature and that calms down my nerves. So yes, you can do that too. You can change the environment, you can change it to a more relaxing environment and that will help you. Also, in order to be able to deal with stress productively, you could also try eating healthy. Some of us are too down with fast foods and we know that these aren't healthy foods. Refer to my earlier videos on foods to avoid and healthy foods and spices that we can take to help us live better. So changing your eating behavior, your eating styles can also help you cope with stress. Remember, it's a physiological change and when you eat right, it can help you cope with stress. Now, another way to cope with stress is to ensure that you sleep well. It, we always play with our sleep time and sleep time is very important for everything that we do now if you're a student in order for you to be able to also have a good memory you have to sleep sufficiently also i have previous videos you can watch you know to see how you can strengthen your memory and also if you do not sleep well you will be stressed and so that you have at least eight hours of sleep per day as an adult okay uninterrupted sleep preferably and children should have between 10 to 11 hours of sleep per day depending of depending on their age 
and if for any reason you do not sleep sufficiently at night catching up on your naps during the day is another way to make up for lost sleep at night so sleeping well can help you deal with stress now one other way you can deal with stress is by building healthy relationships having a good social support system so when you have friends and family that care about you when you are dealing with a stressful situation that will help you cope and also talking to them about what you're going through can help you deal with stress don't keep it all to yourself like they say a problem shared is half solved so talk to, talk to your friends and your family about your problems but ensure you're talking to the right people now that's how far we're going to go today i'm trying to make sure our videos are shorter this year and i'm going to do another short video on preventing stress okay so you can also avoid sometimes stress is self-imposed or created by us so you can also avoid stressful situations so you can prevent being stressed by doing one or two things and let's talk about that in the next video it's been an interesting time with you as usual please click on the subscribe button subscribe to this channel so you can follow us as we share knowledge and interact and if you have any questions do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section i will answer them as i see them please let's connect on instagram at the psychologist ng and let's connect uh, on twitter at the psychologist ng also you can search for me on linkedin it's blessing Nkong Ntamu on LinkedIn. It's been a nice time with you. Have a pleasant day out there. And please stay away from stress. Ensure that you deliberately engage in behaviors that will help you cope with stress. Have a lovely day. And from me to you, bye.